Hi, I'm pop culture historian Dave Sundstrom, and I'm wondering, are you willing to hang out with me for a little bit and go back in time and remember the classic TV show Three's Company? Awesome. Let's do it. Tuesday, Janet, Jack, and Chrissy spend a crazy Christmas with the Ropers. Everybody dance. On Three's Company. For most of the eight years that Joyce DeWitt worked on her classic TV sitcom Three's Company, it brought her a tremendous amount of joy and happiness. But there was a moment toward the end of the show where she felt the exact opposite. This is that story. But don't worry, it's not a complete downer. Hang on for a few minutes and you'll see why. When Three's Company debuted in 1977, it was a huge rating success. Based on the British sitcom Man About the House, Three's Company was an extremely lightweight and good-hearted farcical comedy that depicted the ongoing hijinks of two girls in desperate need of a roommate who turns up in the form of a guy that they find passed out in the bathtub after their going away party for their prior roommate. The chemistry between stars Joyce DeWitt, John Ritter, and Suzanne Somers, well, it was immediately apparent. Just watching those early episodes, you can see how much fun that they were all having working together. When it works, it's magic, and you can see it on the screen. When a casting director fails at his or her job, however, it can be disastrous. Fortunately for those involved with Three's Company, the creative folks behind the scenes were all immensely talented people. At some future point, I'll probably devote an entire video to Suzanne Summers' departure from the show. End of the day, she was looking to get the same salary as John Ritter. Looking back, that doesn't feel like a ridiculous request. Ultimately, however, the network balked and walked away from the negotiating table. Both Jenny Lee Harrison and Priscilla Barnes were great, but I will admit that Suzanne was missed. But you know what they say, the show must go on. And go on it did. And throughout it all, Joyce DeWitt was there, a constant, loyal to everyone involved in making the show, especially to John Ritter. She loved working with John and he felt the same way. As time went on, it felt like the show was moving in a particular direction with the development of these two characters. It felt like they were becoming more than friends. There were little hints that a romance might be brewing. There was a flirtatious air between the two characters on many of the episodes. And quite frankly, from everything that I've read, I believe that Joyce was way on board with the idea that when the show finally went off the air, these two wonderful characters might end up together. Unfortunately, that was not what the producers of the show had in mind. They were following a roadmap that had been created by the original British version of the show. First, they spun off the Ropers, just like the British show did with their show, George and Mildred. And now the producers were looking at what the UK version of the show did after Man About the House ended. The British version of Jack Tripper, named Robin Tripp, did not end up with one of his roommates. Instead, he found love elsewhere. And the show was spun off as Robin's Nest, which was very successful and ran for six seasons. So, during that eighth and final season of Three's Company, we were introduced to a new character, Vicki Bradford, played by Mary Cotterett. Jack is instantly smitten with her, and over the course of a handful of episodes, a courtship ensues with Jack and Vicki ultimately moving in together against her father's wishes. Classic sitcom material, right? Maybe, but I can't help but think about how difficult this must have been for Joyce. She had been fiercely loyal to everyone involved with the show since the very beginning, and now it was planning to move on without her. Always the consummate professional. You would never know the end was near watching her perform with John and Mary. With each passing episode, it was kind of like they were making her dig her own grave, metaphorically speaking and audiences in the U.S. must have felt just a little bit betrayed as well. Instead of the Jack and Janet romance that we'd seen hinted at for most of the show's eight seasons, we got Vicky and Jack and their new Janetless show, Three's a Crowd, debuting in the fall of 1984, just one week after the final primetime airing of Three's Company. The new show was not a hit. It would last just one season. I can't help but feel like if we'd just gotten a slightly different show with a couple of actors that had proven their chemistry with each other for years, the outcome of Three's a Crowd, or whatever they might have decided to call it, would have been very different. 
It's just my opinion and I could be wrong, but it's also my opinion that a decision to involve Joyce in the spinoff would have been the right thing to do. However, Hollywood doesn't have the best reputation for always doing the right thing. Like I said, although Joyce was broken hearted by the turn of events, this isn't a particularly sad story. You see, after making a few appearances on other shows, Joyce decided to take some time away from the industry to regroup, relax a bit and rediscover just exactly who she was. And she discovered that she enjoyed performing in live theater. Every now and again, Joyce will emerge from her beautiful New Mexico home, tucked away in near seclusion, to perform with great actors such as Tab Hunter and one of my favorites, Tony Dow from Leave it to Beaver. She has also recently co-starred with Mickey Dolenz, yep, one of the monkeys, in a play called Comedy is Hard, where he plays an aging comedian and she plays an aging actress. Something tells me that they might be able to pull those roles off. From everything that I've heard, the play is hilarious but it will also touch your heart in unexpected ways. How about we get a movie version of this play for those of us who might not get a chance to see it live? I would definitely go see it for these two wonderful actors. Joyce also recently reunited with her former Threes Company co-star Suzanne Summers. After a warm greeting, Joyce sat down with Suzanne and reminisced about the good times that they had together so many years ago. Joyce seems to really be making a name for herself in live theater. While it affords her the ability to pop out of the woodwork every now and again and do what she does best, the less hectic pace that she maintains by staying away from the camera allows her to remain grounded and be her authentic self. So that's it. One final picture. Jack and Janet really were wonderful friends. And boy oh boy were they funny together. Anyway, what do you think? Did you like Three's a Crowd, or were you disappointed by the decision to jettison Janet for that new girl, Vicky? Let me know what you think in the comments section, and while you're at it, I'd love a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and I would be absolutely honored if you would consider subscribing to my channel. I talk about music, movies, and television mostly from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know, the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching. We get ready now to continue with the competition, the obstacle course event. And there is Patty Klaus. She's ready to take her part, and her opponent will be Joyce DeWitt. And Frank Gifford was there earlier to speak with Joyce. Joyce, uh, I know you probably haven't done this too many times. What has been the advice of uh, first your trainer and your captain? Uh, well, uh, stay low, going under the nets here, watch each tire carefully, and don't fall off the monkey bars. Um, and take it easy getting on the rope. Remember the tires, keep the knees high. Keep the knees high, okay. Well, right. Thank you, yeah, you said and it earlier. it's white wine with fish. And it's white, okay. <laughs> All right, good luck, guys. White wine and fish, and they may be a pair of fish before this thing is over. Remember, they've got to beat the times of Wendy Rastatter and Valerie Bertinelli, 24.18, 26.30 seconds. Patty Klaus nearest to you. And they're off. Going under that first obstacle. No problem there. Now the tires. Keep the knees high, Gift told them, and they followed his instructions. The monkey boss can become a problem. And do become a problem right there for Patty Klaus. So Joyce DeWitt has the lead, but she's having trouble getting up the ladder. And Patty Klaus has made up most of the ground, so they get to the final obstacle, the water pit. And oh! Patty Klaus hurt that right leg. You could see it. And that's what gives Joyce DeWitt the victory. Let's get in there as quickly as we can to find out how hurt Patty Klaus actually is. What happened to you, Patty? Did you hurt yourself? Oh, it's okay. Where'd you hurt yourself? On oh, your leg. On your leg. The water. Right. It's okay. On the oh. water, dear? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. Again. Meanwhile, I have to congratulate you, Joyce. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You were uh, having trouble. Is she a tiger? Oh, good. Oh, I'm she tiger. was having trouble getting over that wall. What yeah. was that time? 29.05, so Wendy Rastata still has the best time. Yeah, she but sure congratulations. Does. Thank you. And Thank I hope you, you feel better. Oh, I feel good. You got a lot of guts. <laughs> Thank you. Let's take a look at her in action again on that water pit in slow motion. Now, Patty's coming up to it, the left side of your screen. And see that right leg lag behind and get caught there at the very edge, as shown by the circle of the pit. Now she's with the doctor. Oh, come on over the trainer for the competition. Yeah. And see the groove. Yeah. Sure. And she'll be all right.
smooth look is a sexy look, and it's yours with undie legs. The pantyhose with the stay put panty. Undie legs go under the clingiest of clothes, erasing wrinkly panty lines forever. All that's left is you. Stretching, bending, standing, setting. There's one pantyhose that's always fitting. Nothing beats a great pair of plates. Okay, I admit it. I am a huge fan of the sitcom Three's Company that ran on ABC TV for eight seasons during the late 70s and early 80s. The show was just silly and fun, and despite a bunch of cast member changes throughout the show's run, for the most part, it just worked as lightweight, escapist entertainment during a time when many folks needed a break from the harsh realities of the world. And the chemistry between the original stars of the show, Joyce DeWitt, John Ritter, and Suzanne Somers, it was immediately apparent. Just watching those early episodes, you can see how much fun they were having working together. When it works, folks, it's magic. You can see it on the screen. However, when a casting director fails at his or her job, well, it can be disastrous. Fortunately, for those involved with Three's Company, the creative folks behind the scenes were all immensely talented people. And throughout it all, Joyce DeWitt was there, a constant, loyal to everyone involved in the making of the show, and especially loyal to John Ritter. As time went on, it felt like the show was moving in a particular direction with the development of their two characters. It felt like they were becoming more than friends. There were little hints that a romance might be brewing. There was a flirtatious air between the two characters on many of the episodes, and quite frankly, from everything that I've read, I believe that Joyce was on board with the idea that when the show finally went off the air, that these two wonderful characters, well, they might end up together. And it's an idea that I really liked as well. Yes, there are those that will argue that these two walking down the aisle together would have been disastrous, but you know what? Married life is often a comedy of errors as two people get to know each other and learn that love is so much more than just infatuation. Unfortunately, that was not what the producers of the show had in mind. So, during that eighth and final season of Three's Company, we were introduced to a new character, Vicki Bradford, played by Mary Cotterett. Jack is instantly smitten with her, and over the course of a handful of episodes, a courtship ensues with Jack and Vicki ultimately moving in together, against her father's wishes. Classic sitcom material, right? Well, that's what the producers of Three's Company thought. Debuting in the fall of 1984, just one week after the final primetime airing of Three's Company, a new Janetless spin-off called Three's a Crowd hit the airwaves, and I think audiences in the U.S. felt a little bit betrayed. Instead of the Jack and Janet romance that we'd seen hinted at, we got Vicky and Jack. Suffice it to say, the new show was not a hit. It would last just one season. Interestingly, although Joyce DeWitt never made a guest appearance on Three's a Crowd, Janet was never forgotten by the fans, and I'd like to think by good old Jack Tripper himself as well. So with all that said, here are five big reasons why Jack and Janet, well, they should have ended up together at the end of Three's Company. Reason number one is simple. It's the chemistry between these two wonderful actors. Clearly, Joyce and John enjoyed working together, and while I'm sure there were moments during those eight seasons where they may have gotten on each other's nerves a little bit, end of the day, they had a great deal of respect for each other, which showed up on the screen episode after episode. Reason number two, Joyce didn't want to leave, and from everything I've read, it seemed like the producers were well aware of that fact. She was happy working on the show, and if they had made the decision to create a spin-off where Jack and Janet finally rode off into the sunset together, well, I think they knew that she would have been 100% on board with the idea. Reason number three is the fans didn't want her to leave either. Along with John Ritter and Richard Klein, who was invited to make a guest appearance on Three's a Crowd, by the way, Joyce had been there from day one, and those of us who loved the show simply didn't want to see her go. You see, it's kind of like going to a restaurant that you really like and being super excited to order your favorite meal, but the chef insists on making you something completely different. Maybe it isn't bad, but it isn't what you wanted. That's how I felt when Jack left Janet for Vicky. You know, in 1981, the Kinks released a killer album titled Give the People What They Want. 
it has some great songs on it, and it's exactly the type of up-tempo rock music that fans of the band wanted. The producers of Three's Company really could have taken a cue from the band and the title of that record. In short, Three's a Crowd did not give the people what they wanted. Which brings us to big reason number four. The spin-off that we really wanted never happened. Joyce wanted it, the fans wanted it, but for whatever reason, perhaps it was to reduce the show's budget, the creative people behind the scenes couldn't see the obvious thing to do. I'm quite confident that if Three's Company spin-off with Jack and Janet together would have been a hit, well, at the very least, it would have drawn a bigger television audience than Three's a Crowd did. And lastly, the fifth reason why Jack and Janet should have ended up together is because both characters deserved that ending. Forget about what the fans wanted. Instead, let's focus on the characters for just a minute. These two truly deserved each other. They deserved a very different happily ever after than the one that the show's writers concocted for them. In particular, Janet's whirlwind courtship with fine arts dealer Philip Dawson was just plain irritating. You know, maybe it all worked out for the best anyway. After taking some time off, Joyce has really seemed to make a name for herself in live theater. She starred with Tab Hunter and Tony Dow in the romantic comedy Love Letters, as well as Mickey Dolan's Yep, One of the Monkeys in a play called Comedy is Hard, where he plays an aging comedian and she plays an aging actress. Live theater has provided Joyce with the ability to pop out of the woodwork every now and again and do what she does best, while maintaining a less hectic pace that allows her to remain grounded and be her authentic self. So that's it. One final picture. Jack and Janet really were wonderful friends. And boy, oh boy, were they funny together. Anyway, what do you think? Did you like Three's a Crowd? Or were you disappointed by the decision to jettison Janet for that new girl, Vicky? Let me know what you think in the comments section. And while you're at it, I'd love a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And I would be honored if you would consider subscribing to my channel. I talk about music, movies, and television, mostly from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know, the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.